Hey, this is Vu, and this is going to be the definitive guide to CSGO settings. And this will be your video settings with some things you might not have known, as well as keybinds, FPS optimization, and everything else you wish the other settings videos had. And we'll start with the most simple thing you would think which is aspect ratio and resolution. And this is one of those things, as many things are, that people think is all personal preference. And there is a large degree of personal preference, but that's not all it is. When you look at aspect ratio, you'll see most pros typically have a four by three aspect ratio. I think that's more to do with comfort. They come from CS 1.6 and source, especially with bad PCs. You just play with what you're comfortable with. And technically four three is a disadvantage Advantage as it cuts off the sides of your screens. However, it's not enough of a disadvantage and you really shouldn't be getting shot from the sides all that often and win that gunfight anyways for it to make too big of a difference. The one real change though is that when you look at 4x3 stretched, you have wider character models that move a lot faster. Stretch certainly is the king when you look at pro resolutions. Almost 70% of the people I looked at use stretched. However, it is important to keep in mind that it can be a struggle to tell what type of peak people are going for when they're moving like a freaking F1 car. If you come from other games like Call of Duty or whatever else, you're probably going to be most comfortable with 16 by 9. However, there's no harm in trying out the other aspect ratios. And when it comes to resolution, really what you're doing is you're going to try and downscale until you get consistent FPS. One of the benefits of playing on a slightly lower resolution, and you're going to see the most common resolution in the pro scene is actually 1280 by 960. It makes the game a little bit less cluttered. It feels a little bit more smooth when you don't have so much going on. And of course, it goes without saying alongside that, that you typically don't want to be using G-Sync or V-Sync when it comes to CS, as it's going to limit your FPS and more FPS is better. Now, the more advanced settings are where you'd be thinking that things become personal preference. However, your video settings are actually where things really matter. If you look at global shadow quality, this setting is actually kind of important for a fairly weird reason. If you notice when you're on low, you're going to have shadows from players disappear at any reasonable range. However, if you have it on a higher setting, you'll see that they last much longer. And this can be very significant in areas like mid on Mirage, where a player may be hiding in a smoke but you can see their shadow on the ground the second setting model texture detail is entirely graphical so you're going to see a lot of players typically go for a high low high high setting situation because this is something that doesn't matter and as cs players we all know that extra one fps is going to put me on the top of the scoreboard now I say high, low, high, high, higher effect detail and shader detail is going to allow you to see through Molotov smoke a lot more easily. And it's also going to make your guns look really pretty. These actually in some specific scenarios will make nades harder to see through. However, it's much more common to have problems looking through a Molotov and those are more consistently going to be affected. And that's what really matters. I will note that despite these giving a slight competitive advantage, they do cost a lot of FPS, so unless you have a very fast computer, you may still want to keep them on low. The other two settings you're probably looking at are MXAA and FXAA anti-aliasing, and I would generally recommend to keep these off. They don't necessarily cost that much FPS, but it's entirely graphical, so who cares? Now, boost player contrast is actually a newer setting that you don't see in a lot of the other videos, which is very useful for actually seeing players. This should really have an insignificant effect on your FPS. However, I have heard people with older PCs have had issue with it. So definitely keep that in mind. Other than multi-core rendering, which is basically just a free FPS boost when you turn it on, everything else in there is entirely graphical, so if you're worried about your FPS, you may as well leave it off. I'll note that since I made this voiceover, someone made a benchmark of all of the CSGO settings and put it in a video. I'll link that video in the description, and if you're really interested in these extra settings, you can give that a look. When it comes to your audio settings, there's only a few things I really recommend, and these might be obvious, but I feel it necessary to say so. You want to make sure that you don't have surround sound on. You should be playing stereo, either stereo speakers or headphones, and you should definitely be having 3D audio on. As well, you want to make sure that you have the 10 second music on. I've heard people disagree with this. It seems a little bit crazy to me that someone would disagree with this. However, 
you want to know when there's 10 seconds left, especially for long diffuses, if you're a loser and don't buy a diffuser. The other thing you want to make sure you have in your game settings is you want to have show location and equipment enabled. This is something that was added somewhat late in the CS cycle, and it gives you a huge advantage being able to simply see where your teammates are at a glance rather than looking where they are and then asking what their utility is. It's a very simple advantage that you definitely want to employ. Along with that, you wanna make sure you're actually looking at your minimap settings. This is something a lot of people overlook. However, you usually wanna zoom it out a little bit so that you can see your teammates on the other side of the map and adjust accordingly in your positioning. However, it can be kind of tough sometimes in very specific scenarios to do something like find the bomb in a smoke if your radar is too zoomed out. So what I recommend is having a fairly zoomed out standard radar and having a key bind that toggles your radar to be more zoomed in in these specific scenarios. The command to do so is on the screen here as well as in the description. So you can just use that and it makes your life a whole lot easier. Now for crosshair and view model, this is obviously something I've got to mention, but is really personal preference. However, you will see some consistency throughout the high level and pro scenes. When it comes to the pro scene, basically everyone uses a small static crosshair with no dot as well. Pretty much everyone seems to play on classic view model. Now the crosshair is something that makes a whole lot of sense. If you're very used to CS, you don't need to know when you're inaccurate. You simply know it intuitively and you want to just have the crosshair as a point of reference when you're newer to the game people focus on the crosshair a lot however when you're very experienced you're really looking at the enemy and your crosshair is there just as a point of reference to tell you that you're definitely on point and for that reason a small static crosshair makes a lot of sense as well with view model settings it's really personal preference you'll even see people like Davey that have a, a view model in the middle of their screen because it takes up less real estate on the left and right side. However, most people play classic. And the only reason this is relevant is because if you're trying to play with somewhat coordinated players who haven't yet learned all of the nades that really shouldn't use any view model tells, you might play with someone that uses a view model lineup. And it just makes it a little bit easier if you have it on classic, because then you can line up with the same thing they are. Again, you shouldn't be using view model lineups, but, but let's be honest, it happens sometimes. And when it comes to sensitivity, this is something that people always say is personal preference. However, I have a slightly differing view on this topic. Sensitivity is fairly personal preference for the most part. However, there is a range where you will see almost 90% of pro players fall in between. And if we're talking about eDPI, which is your sensitivity times your DPI so that everything is balanced, you're going to see most pro players play between 600 eDPI and about a thousand eDPI, which correlates to 400 DPI at 1.5 to about 400 DPI at 2.5. The reason for this is it allows you to quickly 180 and you know turn around and check your flank very easily. However, it doesn't go so high that you don't need it. You know, as long as you can 180 quickly, you don't need to go much faster. Now, if you're going to use a sensitivity outside of this range, that is fine as long as you've been inside of this range and really tested it out. If you've tested it out and you've played with, you know, 400 DPI, 2.0 sensitivity for a while and you just could never make it work and you want to go outside, that's totally fine by me. However, I found most people that have very high sensitivities typically suck really bad. Now, before we go into FPS things, I want to talk about your key bindings. And there's a few key bindings you definitely should have. The most obvious thing you want to do as you're getting better at the game is don't go through your weapons with scroll wheel. Not only is it inefficient, but it also makes you look like a total noob. What you want optimally is to have all of your nades bound to specific keys and use those effectively. That way you're easily able to pull out a specific piece of utility at a moment's notice. For me, I have HE grenade bound to four, flashbang bound to five, smoke bound to six, and bomb bound to seven with decoy and molotov on Z and X. That makes it very easy for me to pull out my utility right when I need it without scrolling through with scroll wheel or clicking through with a single nade button. 
Once you've done that, you can also optionally bind mouse wheel to jump. Now, technically, kind of similar to the 4x3 situation, this can be seen as a net disadvantage because you have a situation where you might get in a gunfight and you accidentally hit your scroll wheel or your scroll wheel just clicks even though you were nowhere near it and many a game in the pro scene has been lost to this type of situation i've even made a video on it the other binds you want to be looking into are as i mentioned the radar toggle bind which can be very helpful as well as a full screen crosshair toggle what that's going to allow you to do is move away from as i mentioned those weak view model lineups and see a crosshair on your whole screen to really line up with a lot of intricate details you'll see most higher level players absolutely have a crosshair toggle you most certainly as well want to make sure you have a jump bind when it comes to jump throwing a piece of utility it's going to match Matter which tick you throw your nade on and with 64 or 128 ticks that equates to milliseconds and that means you need to have a jump bind to ever consistently land intricate jump throws otherwise they're gonna be landing all over the place now to set up a jump bind, you are going to need an auto exec, which is going to be in your launch options. There's only a few launch options you wanna even consider having, and I'll go over those in a little bit. However, for this part, you just need plus exec auto exec. Now for the auto exec, what you need to do is you need an auto exec notepad. So go into your config files, copy and paste your standard config, rename it to auto exec, and then add in there this set of lines. You can really add in there anything you want. You could add in there something ridiculous if you felt like. What it's going to do is it's just going to exec this line of commands every time your game starts in tandem with that launch option. And that's going to allow you to consistently have alias commands that would otherwise be reset. There are two other key binds that I'll mention, but won't really go in depth about. One is a clear decals bind, which will allow you to reset any blood or bullets on the wall so you can see a little bit more clearly. And the second is a bomb drop bind, which is probably not something you really need, but it is convenient if you're a terrible teammate like me. So for the launch options you've seen me have here, I've got Novid and Tick Rate 128. Novid is just so I don't blow out my eardrums, and Tick Rate 128 is so when I start a workshop server, it's going to be in 128 ticks since I play mostly Face It or ESEA, and if I'm practicing jump throw nades, I want to make sure that I've got the actual throw I'm going to have in game. The other launch option I've heard mixed results about and didn't really do anything for me is dash high. My understanding is that on lower end PCs this can be very helpful as it'll set your CPU to a higher priority for CSGO, but again I've also heard that this can lower your FPS for certain people, so if you want you can test out how this works for you and report back with your results. Now for a specific FPS thing, I've heard very good stories about setting your CPU to not use processor core zero. This seems a little bit odd and it didn't do anything to help me. In fact, it kind of hurt my FPS on a high-end PC. However, I've heard people say it's boosted their FPS by 50 to 100 before. There are two ways to do this. First, you can do it in your task manager and second, you can do it with a program. I'll send you a link to a Reddit thread that talks about this very specifically. I've heard very good things about this but again similar to almost all other fps things i've mentioned figure out your fps with this off and then turn it on and figure out your fps with this on i can already predict there's going to be a frequently asked question which is how do you get your game in stretched it's only showing black bars or how do you get your game in black bars it's only showing stretched the only answer to that is to make sure you go into your graphics card settings and set it to full screen or if you want stretched or set it to aspect ratio if you want four three black bars as well sometimes you need to change the scaling option from display to gpu unfortunately it seems to be common knowledge that gpu scaling adds a tiny bit of input lag however it's not enough to really be noticeable so i wouldn't worry about it too much anyways thanks for watching and i hope this helped if you like the content head over to my patreon check it out subscribe get a demo review be a better player i don't know man you know, it's an outro. Set yourself to paying for Vu's Patreon. Support the creator, support the content, you know, whatever.